Hello, everyone, and welcome to another session of Hasalia Red Door Union Era of Glass. Um, you might notice, first off, since you're not watching this on Twitch, that we are not streaming on Twitch. That might have been the dumbest thing I've said in a really long time. Uh, yep. <laughs> either way, uh, today, uh, September the 1st, Wednesday, is a day off Twitch, uh, which we are essentially... A lot of Twitch streamers and viewers are boycotting the platform for not doing enough involving the hate raids that have been going on against POC and marginalized creators. So uh, we're gonna. That's why you're watching it on either YouTube, the Patreon, or however else you got a hold of this vod. I don't know. Maybe I mailed it to you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, um. God. I gotta get situated here. You're gonna note the quality is a little bit off. Compared to when we normally stream, especially with the model. Uh, yeah, it's all fucky-wucky. I still haven't figured out this blinking shit. But I'm getting closer. I spoke to my rigor recently. Regardless, we're here for some fucking D&D. We're starting a little late on our time. Uh, where we last left you guys, was it last week? Yeah, last week. You um, assaulted the strange glass creatures that were kidnapping or had kidnapped all of the residents of the village of honey falls and in doing so uh, a lot of you suffered some pretty you know rough injuries and things like that i don't think anybody got a critical wound uh heath came really fucking close to dying but with the help of the new party member uh runa the uh team nat one managed just just barely to defeat all the foes and save every single one of the villagers. Not a one was killed in the battle. Uh, partially in thanks to a particular villager who uh, managed to pass a potion of healing to the party. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Ass potion. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, so, currently... You guys all stand still in the valley with the ruins around you. The lake is still and the constant glow of arcane energy carrying on very, very minuscule, tiny shards of glass through ley lines that dance and weave through the air. A little bit of lights given off in this area. The villagers are clapping and cheering, and one of them's waving around a crowbar with rope and oil wrapped on it. The crowbar is currently on fire. Yay! Is is that a good thing? It's a torch. It's a, it's a fake torch. It's a it's a torch. Um, what do you call it again? You're a torch. We could, I am. We could just, we could just give them regular torch? torches. You're not wrong. I am a torch. Yeah, I love you. What's the movie called again? Transformers? No. Fireman? No. What's it called? Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. It's not a movie. There, it's a cartoon and comic before it's a movie. But yes, the Fantastic Four. Wait, I also got to know which Fantastic Four did you see? I saw none of them. <laughs> <laughs> Think you just you okay with that? <laughs> you just shut down patch. <laughs> he needs to reboot. Uh. <laughs> so what's everybody doing? <laughs> well, first of all, I'm going to go over to uh one of the villagers and forget about it because i don't have torches in my inventory either so we gotta walk away from him okay bye the blonde guy who pulled the potion out of his butt says uh, i'm gonna be holding my side as i'm just like walking forward all hurt and stuff so um we did it huh sure did has it been a sign of the the commander that yet though, right? Oi! Villager! Uh, yeah, hi! How can I help you? 
Where are the knights that were escorting you? Where have they gone? Uh, what knights? There were no knights? No, this is the group that got captured uh, and separated, so it's a different oh. group of villagers that were rescued. Wait, so where, where are the knights then? Good question. Think about a different D&D game or...? No, 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 no. There is knights. There's Are you just... about the knight that we give the dog... T oh, we killed the dog tags from? Mm -mm. No, the, her, her commander, I think, had another group of villagers. I just don't know where they went. Well, Hold on. Uh, he flings into Carrigan and just whispers uh, softly, Do you think Haja is, you know, trying to communicate with his... With his patron or something? Did you think I should have I don't know of any patron that would accept him. Are you sure? Would it be the perfect choice? I, I also think it'd be much, much more conceivable that Aja isn't quite right. <laughs> wow, Aja! <laughs> You I... had a hooded lantern? Yeah... And instead of giving the villager a hooded lantern, you gave him a crowbar with some fucking... Listen, twat. the hooded lantern was, I think, too good for them. Uh, I don't want to detect it. Okay, it's my lantern. In character, <laughs> out of character, I mean. <laughs> no, no, this conversation's in character as you see Haja take out a hooded lantern and light it, Heath. Mm-hmm. I know I said that out loud. <laughs> can we go mm -hmm. outside, please? Um, well, are you are sure outside. we don't want to... It's just it's a valley. Are you sure we don't <laughs> want to search this place? They were I doing think... something over there, weren't they? Yeah, I do think we should uh, inspect the mirror and see uh, what exactly is going on with the search hall. Oh, I got a really good, good, uh, good and close look on it several times, actually. Did over and over. Uh, no, I was kind of fighting for my life. I think looking over you. the mirror would be a wonderful idea when we're not all almost dead. Ah, uh, this is true. <sighs> well, well, either way, Hodge has already. Whatever they were talking to decided and, to come through it. And then um, they went. Oh? Haji's already walked off, so I don't think it's a matter of discussing it. I can't see him in my dark vision, so this is concerning. He's, He's over here. Oh, okay. Oh god, yes he is! <laughs> Haja heads over to the mirror. You can see I the... I head over the mirror. Oh, you don't head over to the mirror? Okay. I look around see if there's anything good that the bodies might have dropped. What bodies? Or, or anything like a chest yeah. or anything that looks interesting in the ground. I care not for a mirror. There's it's a no pile of bucket. Piles of glass Thanks. dust Thanks. everywhere. See nothing there. See. I shot back, I shot back. There's nothing over here. What about the mirror? It's just a mirror. Is it just I a I turn I turn I turn to I turn to Solstice. Is it just a mirror? No, it's not just a mirror, it's used in a ritual typically it was used in a ritual for uh the gods Goran, but this this is wrong well, i regardless. guess i'll go over to the mirror then Haja, uh as you walk in front of the mirror your passive perception picks up that you don't have a reflection heath the same for you so i uh, don't hmm huh. the mirror the mirror's broken the mirror is still it smeared with blood but, uh, Heath, you got mashed against it really hard every time, and there's not a single crack, dent, or a scuff mark on it, aside from your blood. Aja, can you be straight with me for a moment? Okay. Like, Are you a vampire? Hmm. I don't like that you did it. So you couldn't say no immediately, but that's 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 fine because am I a vampire? I try to think. How can I find out? 
I think if one inspector like chest might find out, but that might kill every anyone. But if if you go out in the sunlight and you burn to death, I suppose. Never mind. I go in the sunlight all the time. I am not a vampire. Okay, let me let me let me let me inspect the um, the mirror, I suppose. Sure. Um, let me inspect it with our carnage, like see if it has any magical properties or whatever. Of like course. I can recognize whatever's <laughs> going on here. Twenty-three solstice. You heal for seven. The mirror oh. is a mirror of imprisonment. Thank you. It is a magic item capable of drawing in a creature and imprisoning it within a dimension behind existing only in that particular mirror. It sounds like kind of like a lot like Doctor Strange in his first movie. Uh-huh. Who the hell is Doctor Strange? Wait, you know what, did Strange? You, what did you just say, Patch? I'm sorry. It's a mirror of imprisonment. These mirrors uh. are made to imprison powerful creatures, things, or people and generally used as traps. Uh, by drawing the soul and the out of the creature that looks into the mirror and traps it into a dimensional kind of pocket space that exists in the mirror. Heath, this is not a conventional event, uh, imprisonment mirror, however. Uh, it looks different. You're not exactly certain how. But it is a mirror reflecting a uh, essential of pocket dimension. Since you don't exist in that dimension, you aren't giving off a reflection. What? Think, Say that again? Since you don't exist in the pocket dimension behind the mirror, when you look into the mirror, you don't see your reflection. Well, this would be very useful information for the people that were at the mirror earlier. Well, uh, I say... Well, from what I can gather is that this is some sort of magic mirror, and it's usually used to trap people. And the reason why we can't see our reflection in it is because we don't exist on the other side. Da, da, da. Does that ring any bells for you? You shout this over the uh, about eighty to hundred feet. Well, of distance I mean, Hodge, Hodge is standing next to me. No, he isn't. He's swimming in the lake. Oh, when the fuck did that happen? I had my character sheet up, and Hodge is no longer standing next to me. Yeah, he ran over uh, to the lake to take a swim in it. I'm what you call mobile. You guys come over to inspect the mirror. Kerrigan, you give off a reflection. <gasps> oh, no. What? It looks like a normal mirror to me. <laughs> Am I a vampire? <laughs> Sol Solstice, do you give off a reflection? Looks like a normal mirror to me. Solstice, do you give a, do you look into the mirror to see if you give a reflection? <laughs> sure, why not? You give off a reflection. Oh. Oh no. Wait. For. No, that doesn't make any sense either. I was just thinking, wait, maybe it's a th sort of reverse thing where only people that don't have a reflection is inside the mirror, but I'm here. You mean the bucket dimension that you were just shouting about? Right. Ah. Uh. Do you guys do anything in front of the mirror? You're just staring oh. at it in yourselves. Mm. <laughs> Um, that so, right like, there is a hand the, only th the only things we saw up here was, like, one of those Berserker dudes, an ogre. Oh, uh, one and more thing as what? well. Solstice, right, you your, passive, your passive perception My solstice what? is, your passive perception solstice is enough to catch something. I think Kerrigan's might be as well. Um, anytime Solstice or Kerrigan interact with Heath, 
their reflection does not. Meaning, like, anytime they turn towards him to look or talk, the uh, reflection of them does something else. It's always something similar, but a little different. What the fuck? Okay, I, I don't like that. Yeah, that's creepy. What happens if you put your hand in it? No. <laughs> I put, um, I put, I put, I put my face in it, and the thing happens. There's still like a blood in. print shaped like Heath all over the mirror. <laughs> it's like you know when you're a kid and you have those markers that you can stamp, and they have shapes under the like uh, under the uh, the page. You know? No? Okay, it's, it's like, like cookie yeah, cutters. It's, it's like it's like cookie turn. cutters. You know how when they're shaped like a gingerbread man, and then like you know the cookie uh, still retains the shape when you take it off. Yeah. There's just there's just essentially splotches of Heath in various poses all over the mirror. Oh, are you talking about like how like the the visual effects for the captains in the Pirates of the Caribbean Five? What the fuck? The what? <laughs> how, how <did> that come <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I gotta go with their shit. No, okay, well, he, well, he's doing that. Carry on with your discussion, guys. Uh, so, uh, hey, Egg, have you ever seen Snow? The movie? No, no snow, snow, as in real snow. <laughs> yeah. Movie. Have you ever put your face in it? I've done snow angels. It's okay. like a snow angel, but Heath is just yeah. all over it, in blood. Yeah. It's just Heath shaped like snow angels in the mirror. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's, he's, li he's, li he's not... Oh god, never mind. It's an imprint of his of his silhouette and I don't know if Egg knows what the word imprint Yes I do. It's like when you get like uh paint <laughs> all over hand, you slap it on the paper and like it stays there, like the yeah. markings in the hand. Yeah. Yes, exactly. that's exactly what's happened to Heath with the mirror. It's not a special <laughs> effect for Pirates of the Caribbean. It's literally just an imprint on the mirror. Should I look for that picture but I can't find <laughs> I'm going it's to cool. uh Try and see if uh, any of my knowledge in religion um, can bring anything else to light. Sure. Oh shit, I'm sorry, I have to fix that. My apologies, I was at it. Oh, that would have been nice. Wah, wah. Oh well. Incoming nat 1. <laughs> or another nat 20! Uh, no. Damn! Not a single thing. You do know that uh, Scoran's religion... Um, during the war, used um, mirrors and such in order to imprison his foes. Um, that is a common knowledge thing that your religion would know, and you you pull up that this must be relevant. Mm -hmm. Being that this was a whole ritual kind of about him, you know, the whole mirror thing. This is actually your second nat 20 on this shit that, like, no one's supposed to know about. So, you know, I guess you're just this really weird religious history nerd who knows stuff that others don't. Um, I guess so. Let me, uh, let me try to continue. Um, what you're able to infer is that this isn't one of those mirrors. It's, again, like the ritual, really fucking similar, but not exact. In this case, the evidence of Solstice and Kerrigan being, for some reason, reflected without Heath, as well as the fact that... Uh, the reflection in the mirror was showing something different when the guy with the tattoos was in front of it. It makes you think that this is more like... A much larger dimensional space than normal Scoran's glass prisons would allow for. Scoran's glass prisons were essentially like very, very tiny pocket dimensions that you were stuck in one spot all the rest of eternity. Um, this looks like it's a whole universe behind it. Oh, wait, I have an idea. Hey, Carrigan, can you lift me up? Why? Well, maybe I'm just not reaching up to the mirror where my mirror image would show. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that might be... That might work. Would you like to pick him up? I grab him by the back of his collar, 
like I'm grabbing the scruff of his neck and holding him just like a kitten. <laughs> you, Solstice, the mirror reflection you and Kerrigan are discussing, and then you suddenly point off to the side, off of something outside of mirror range. Kerrigan's reflection leans down, picks it up. Uh, this is at the same time as he's doing it in real time, so Kerrigan, you don't see most of this. Um, Kerrigan picks up a boulder about the uh, size of Heath and is standing there in the mirror with it. Whoa. Do I see the boulder? Yep. Congratulations. In this alternate dimension, you are a rock. <laughs> You're the rock. Uh, I said Heath back down. Gently. The boulder is also set back down gently. I... I feel insulted. <laughs> you note, though, How? that when Heath, Heath moves around... The boulder does not move or change positions, and no one bothers to push or move it to follow his reflections. I'm... I'm insulted. There's not... Wait, no, I shouldn't be insulted. I should be privileged. There's not another thing that equals my strength on the other side of that portal. I am truly unique. Where, where are you going, Carrigan? Kerrigan? <laughs> Meanwhile, as Kerrigan walks away, uh, the blonde villager is like, uh, Mr. Adventurer, you're, um, you might not want to swim in that water. Oh, why is that? Well, I mean, and the adventurer, uh, sorry, the villager gestures out to all the weird glass ley lines moving around in the air still. What's a glass ley line? It's like, um, essentially, uh, rivers of glass flying through the air right now, like little shards picked up in winds of arcane energy and power. You see all those colors on the map? The blue and the shit? Yeah. That's glass flying around the air. So that's fresh, uh, streams of glass flying through the air. And loop -de -loop. Okay. Yep. And arcane energy, like lightning and electricity and other things and such. And, uh, huh. it looks like it's all kind of around that, that that lake and that water and that glowy thing in the middle. Oh, what is that glowing thing in the middle? Uh, now that you get a good look at it, focusing on it, it appears to be a uh, arcane runic symbol of glass that is solidified and, unlike all the rest of the glass in the area, unmoving in the center of the lake. Huh. Hey, guys. I mean... Hey guys, guys, there's like yeah. this weird glowing yeah, symbol in the middle of the lake. Huh? Should I stab it? Yeah, says the villager. Not you. I'm talking to these guys. Uh, back in Honey Falls, we operated under you know a democracy where we'd elect a mayor. Oh, when you're adventuring, there's no such thing as democracy. It doesn't work like that when adventuring. Oh. I was I, trying to make I, it work like that, but that's actually something I want to talk to you all about when we get away from here. Okay. Okay. Well, Politics. That, there's nothing else in the area then, right? You've been here for a while. I think right? he's talking to the villagers. Huh? I I come running backwards for a little bit. <laughs> There's nothing else in the area then, right? There's only you. You haven't seen anything else that's been happening. Uh No, not really. We don't even know where this is. So oh. I have a question. Did the um the the man the naked man with the tattoos, did he say anything to you of interest? Well, he wasn't always naked first off. He just took off his clothing. Oh. Oh, is his clothing still around? Uh, he put it in the lake. He put the clothing in the lake. Yeah, so he walked into the lake, I think. It was really hard to see. I could only see it in the reflection of, like, our cuffs. He walked into the lake... All the way, like, until his head was underneath it. And then when he came out, he was naked and had all that weird glass stuff going over his tattoos. 
Hmm. Did this when he was uh, about, you know, <sighs> head, the water was head height. Was it about where the, the rune currently is? Sorry, headset cut out. No, um, he got about head height after a couple steps in. I think the water oh. gets really deep suddenly. Okay, I see. And I don't actually really know super well where he like went or how he got in the lake. I just know that he did, because again, I'd, I looked in the cuffs, but I was kind of preoccupied and shifting around at the time, you know? Hmm... No, no, Hajat, the prisoners are no longer cuffed. You used really... No, you used really, like, good action economy and had them free themselves. That was you. Oh. I guess yeah. we could have used those cuffs, but oh well. They were no, made of glass. Couldn't. They were just glass. Oh. It was shattering them. Right. Did I notice anything while swimming in the lake patch? Or... Not really. You notice that the glass is, like, you know, moving around above and everything, but you didn't dive underwater or anything because you didn't tell me you did, so you just like did a lap I guess okay let's get the townsfolk away from here before something else glass pops up good well, idea uh, well I would like to just go back to the middle real quick and mm -hmm. uh, just let's see what do I have in my inventory that I can use you want to wipe the blood off well I was gonna um Coming just cover it up with stuff so that you can't see out of it on the other side, I guess. Um... Oh, I have an idea for that. Okay. Mud. Does water, does dirt, get water and dirt, throw it against the wall. Right? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do some mud paintings. And I'm going to just start smearing mud all over the the mirror. I you smear it all over the mirror there. until the mirror is currently covered and blocked up by mud. Nice. You know, work well done. The people with reflections haven't interacted, like, with the mirror, touched it or anything. Although I'm a little wary to do that. Um, did Hydra do that? Aja yeah, do. does not have a reflection. No, I don't have a reflection. Yeah, did Haja touch it? No. No, he did not. Patch, I would like to begin leading the villagers away from here. Okay, they seem I'm not gonna touch the mare then. I was going to, but I'm not, because it might be dangerous. You guys... Uh, walk into the cavern. The tunnel system that you'd been through before. Uh, taking the villagers through it. It takes, again, most of the day to get through them. Is anyone doing anything on the trip in the caves? By the time that you leave the caves, Kerrigan, you suspect that first light of dawn will be shining. Yeah, good. Be able to see farther than just a few feet. <laughs> All right. You guys carry on through the caverns, and eventually you come out into the shining light of day. It's still a beautiful warm summer day, and uh, the smell of blood is very far behind you all. You... Are you sure? Because Heath is here. He's pretty <laughs> bloody. It's all night. Uh, as you guys are approaching the cave, you hear a voice call out, Ho there! And, uh, you hear hoof uh, beats as your eyes are adjusting. Uh, those of you with dark uh, vision, your eyes take wonderful. longer to adjust to the sudden change of light of being in a cavern and then out into the bright light of uh, day as it's beginning to shine. The sun is rising on the back of a group of about uh, 12 people. Fine, 12 people, all on horseback in uh, various forms of armor, generally uh, heavy or medium. Uh, that are uh, hoisting the banner of the Agril Torn. Their leader is uh, in uh, full plate and wearing a uh, um, a tabard, 
with a uh, symbol that looks as if he was higher ranked than the others. The banner carry is right behind him, and he's holding a horned helmet underneath one arm. It's hard to kind of make out his face right now or what he actually looks like because the sun's right at his back. But as your eyes adjust, you find yourself looking into a uh, deep red uh, tiefling with a bent horn on one side of his head. On the other side, it's uh, more of a curved, uh, you know, a natural curve rather than the uh, horn that looks like it was bent. He addresses you on horseback. You wouldn't happen to be Team Nat 1, would you? Oh, oh, Indeed, that would be us. Oh, I thought I thought you were calling out uh, that there was a hoe there. And that's not a nice thing to, to say about so our party member Solstice. She's a valued member of Team Nat 1. I'm sorry, you, you say my name, but then there's Runa who's wearing practically nothing. Please, sir. Now, now. My companions, we've just been through uh, quite the ordeal. You, he... you can't, you can't judge a book by its cover, Solstice. She might be wearing the uniform of a hoe, but she—that doesn't mean that she is a hoe. Jesus Christ! Neither am I. I am innocent. The knight watches this banter as he leans his gauntlets on the horn of his saddle, watching the. Uh, five of you and uh kerrigan you're able to detect that there's a slight smile on his face as if he's trying not to smile at uh, your companion's actics but you know the corner of his of his mouths are twitching well uh either way if you're team nat one then i'm hoping you have the villagers with you and he kind of like leans on the uh, pommel to see around i i gesture to npcs the tired Villagers are trudging out of the cave. They were walking a little bit behind you all. Rune is at the very, very back of the pact. And uh, the knight nods and says, Is that all of them accounted for, then? Any casualties? No casualties. Well, there, there was. There all was that we could was find, but there, entered. there were some that were killed. Oh. Yes. I see. There was it... a strange ritual that they were performing. Unfortunately, it required the lifeblood of the villagers. Yes, uh, deep inside these caves, there is a strange uh, magical mirror and some mystical glass used in some kind of arcane formula. Hmm. Beyond the knowledge of any of us. I, I can know. It's not beyond my knowledge. It is, well, okay, maybe this ritual slightly beyond, but it is very similar to the old rituals of uh, of my country for the God of War's Quran. Just very wrong and slightly different. He listens to all that and uh, in Solstice when she brings up recognizing what was going on. Uh, you wouldn't mind, perhaps later on, writing up a proper report about that. Well, I do have some arcane knowledge in my, uh, party right now. Uh, none of them are from Thaskal, uh, or Thanskaran. Meaning that they might not mm -hmm. recognize such rituals. I would be happy, I would be, I would be happy to be of service. Thank you. To the Agwalt Farm. Ah. Heath raises a hand as well, so he reaches about, um, thigh height of everyone else and he's uh well so it's like one of those mirrors that you use to trap someone in but it kind of worked differently uh yes it's, well uh, yes i'm sorry the, the knight the knight raises a hand to kind of stop you all from the divulge of information you're giving him i don't know much about magic um but it sounds as if you have further things to report that would be better to fall on the ears of people who more understand the process. Uh, Archson, and uh, he calls up a uh, drab-looking knight on a pony, a uh, woman uh, who looks very, very tired and like she very much needs a coffee. He kind of leans over to her and whispers something in her ear and gestures at the caverns and she splits off with the five of the party and uh, begin heading down through the tunnels. 
I'm sorry, I don't think we have been properly introduced. I don't oh, recall um, hearing your name. Right, I'm sorry. Uh, he, d d Give me a moment to finish getting things in order, and I'll, uh, I'll be happy to introduce myself personally to you all. Of course. <laughs> he calls over another knight, gestures to the uh, villagers, and says, if you don't mind, we can escort them somewhere safe. Well, that uh, another... The best. We... I intend to stay with you all as well as a few others. Uh, as he's speaking, some of the knights split off and they round up the villagers and begin leading them off too. Soon, it's you, the tiefling knight, and uh, four other of the knights are all that remain. The uh, rest of the knights that uh, stay, they look, um, you know, various men and women, all of them in the uh, lightest kind of armor that uh, he had among his group. So robes, leathers, things like that, with uh, horses also meant for carrying the same. He uh, dismounts and uh, rummages through his saddlebags and uh, produces um, a, you know, pack, puts it down on the ground and, you know, gestures for you all to come over. My name is uh, Sir Charity and I'm with the Agril Torn. I'm uh, one of the captains. My, uh, one of my units uh, was out in this area as well. I believe that you've been tracking them. Uh, um, we may have some bad news in that regard. I've been informed from the knight that you had rescued, and I must offer my most sincerest thanks. She's currently resting at the nearest outpost, the one that I command. Uh, outpost oh, Little Rock, it's called. It's uh, further to the southeast here, just beyond Honey Falls, out that way. Good. Uh, I'm happy to hear she made it to safety. She did, and uh, she gave us as much information as she could, and I set my best rangers to tracking after you all. Um, Are you aware of the whereabouts of the remaining squadron of uh, Captain uh, Clifton? Uh, not just yet, but we'll find her soon, I know. For, for certain. Again, my best rangers are out and about. We prioritized the villagers that we knew adventurers were going after, uh, as opposed to uh, her unit. As, as far as I know from reports, her unit has likely reached safety at this point. Communication lines are uh, difficult. And uh, as he's been talking, he's you know lighting a very, very small kind of fire, and he's put a uh, kettle on and looks to the rest of you and says, Do any of you enjoy tea or coffee? You must be very tired after your fight, and I find nothing peps me such as uh, a nice glass of lemon tea. I, I should very much enjoy like tea. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Sils. I didn't mean to cut no, you off. No, I didn't mean to cut you off. You first. Uh, the others uh, with us as well, when you're ready to move out, They'll be staying behind to guard the cavern entrance and have uh, very graciously offered you use of their horses if you're capable of riding. <laughs> Personally, I'd be willing to escort you once you're mounted up as far as either the outpost of Little Rock or the uh, or Honey Falls, if you'd like. I believe I have some personal business to attend there to now. But that can be discussed after tea and biscuits. <laughs> We're not savages after all. <laughs> he chuckles a little bit. Uh, Solstice looks at Haja. And <laughs> not laughs nervously. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, captain continues to prepare tea. You note uh, that his retainers, the other the other four still kind of like hanging about make no move to help him, but instead are, you know, setting up their own saddlebags, stripping their horses down of things this way you guys can ride them should you want. Um, he does look to Heath apologetically and says, I'm sorry, we didn't have any halflings with us, or so you might find the riding difficult. It's okay. I can share with one of the lovely ladies. Wink. Are you winking well, at his I'm party, not... or are you winking at your own? Yes. Uh, it's a multi-wink. It's a 180, 360 
<laughs> well, uh, the captain uh, laughs and says, it, it, in all honesty, you'll likely be riding with me. Oh. Well, that doesn't sound as fun. <laughs> My horse is the largest and the fastest out of the rest of them. Ooh, I do like large and fast, though. It's how I like sure my women, do. too, am I right? <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Charity finishes brewing up the tea and is handing Kerrigan a, a mug well. Uh, it's a good sturdy wooden traveling mug. Well, uh, Heath is saying this, and uh, he looks directly at you, Kerrigan, still with that kind of, like, grin twitching at his face as if he knows he shouldn't be smiling about this, but he still is, kind of. Um, and he says, ah, I'm guessing that must be the bard in your group. Perceptive of you. I was an adventurer before joining the knights. Uh, I suppose uh, Sir Charity or Captain is my title, and I don't believe I've been introduced to the rest of you yet. Because he, uh, he goes around personally to hand out the mugs. Again, his retainers don't actually do anything. They just kind of tend to their own stuff. Um... My name is Solstice. I'm a cleric of the god sun goddess Ravana from Stanskaran. My name is Kerrigan. And I'm Heath of the Twinklebottom clan. The captain looks to Haja. The stinky quiet one over there is Haja. He's, he's, he's currently um, communicating with his old patron. And I can Actually, see that one of your group have been affected with adventurous fugue. He nods towards Runa. Uh, mm, yeah, it's an, e it's, a, yeah. it's an epidemic. Some say that uh, the fugue remains from the uh, era of shaping, where it's occasionally adventurers who generally hold strong souls that have been uh, constant in past lives will re-experience the horrors of war in their mind and become kind of occupied with it. And he says that uh, somberly while placing a mug in Runa's hand and she, out you know, of, blankly out of takes it. You're, you're saying that Aventurous Fugue is PTSD. A little, More yeah. flashback. Past yeah. okay. yeah. life PTSD. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not remembered. Uh, Charity quickly says once you're out of it and it, I had a party member of mine, he kind of waves his hand, obsessed with the uh, phenomena. <laughs> now, um, I am here to accommodate you all, as you have done the knights a very great favor. Well, I can't uh, offer you the payment prof uh, promised by our headquarters. I can offer you my personal thanks. I can collect um, the, long, uh, the weapon that was loaned, as well as uh, perhaps... Any small favors that need to be done uh, that I am capable of, I would be more than willing to do so for you all. You have helped to keep this region, which I am responsible for, safe. So, the day is yours, O brave adventurers, and I am at your beck and call, as are my knights, and he gestures to the four with him. We can remain here until we get word from those knights scouting the area that you've been in, or we can go to them. Whatever you would like. I wouldn't mind, you know, taking a breather at least. I do think a few of us um, do need to have a rest. We are pretty battered from the events that occurred inside the ruins. Are any of you hungry and... or are you aiming to sleep immediately? I could certainly eat. Yes. I could eat some too. He turns and snaps at a few of the retainers and uh, gets their attention and says, uh, why don't you uh, cook us up something? I know we brought uh, some finer rations, uh, just in case. Uh, make the good things. <clears throat> some pork, sausages, and a bit of sauerkraut. Are any of you from the Underdark? And he looks over, almost hopefully. doesn't look good, that way. Good question. I gotta check. Where's hey, Asha from? 
How do you know if I'm from the Underdark patch? Are you from Are Kadrin? you from the Underdark? Are you from Cadrin? You remember the country that you're uh, in the other game, Haja? The one that got, like, destroyed? Oh, the Sunken Kingdom? Yeah, that area is where the Underdark is primarily focused on. Oh, no, no, sorry. I'm not. Okay. He seems a little disappointed and says, then you likely wouldn't be able to handle the spice of what I'm going to be eating. But, uh, do, 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 you know, at least. Why don't we get a pot boiling of some soup as well? And, uh, it seems like he is an Epicurean as his retainers pull out from their saddlebags a fully set traveling cooking kit and are setting around to cooking a very fine looking meal for you all for breakfast. Involving uh, grilled cheeses, uh, cut into strips, a tomato-like soup broth, and uh, sausages with sauerkraut on the side. <laughs> you can ask him about what he was intending on Solstice. But, um... My country is also famous for its spices. What exactly are you going to partake of? He, his eyes, which are a deep blackish yellow from being a tiefling, of course, sparkle a little bit. And he uh, reaches into his own saddlebags and pulls out a sealed jar of some kind of reddish orange uh, sauce. Grabs another saddlebag and begins pulling out radishes. And, uh, holds out a radish in the jar to you and says, dip, dip some of those in that. It's a, uh, a kind of lichen that you can only collect in the Underdark, but it's very <laughs> spicy and, uh, hot. Meaning that, uh, most, most people who dwell on the surface don't enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to very, very gently, like, not even, like, a, just a tiny bit to try it, because... You know, coming from a, a country where spices can get pretty spicy, you know to proceed with caution first. Uh, and and she she takes takes a, a bite and tries it. It's not as spicy as the stuff you eat back home, but it is pretty fucking spicy. Um, the main difference is that the kind of sauce and spices you have in the desert are very very dry and kind of crunchy, more like a powder. This is more like a paste. And so it's very, very spicy with some uh, strange sweet tinges underneath that only enhance the level of it. But it's not bad enough that you would have any problem with it being A, a tiefling who generally likes spicy food already, and B, uh, being from a desert nation that loves to spice shit. Oh, this is an interesting flavor. I quite like it. I always look for people who are interested in sharing it with me. Then let us share. You guys all get a uh, short rest, or you could even have a long rest, napping throughout the next eight hours as uh, uh, Captain Charity, you know, speaks to you and sets everything up and waits for um, word from the various uh, units he's sent out. No matter how long you, if you choose to stay here for a long rest, uh, the retainers start setting up a mobile command post kind of thing with uh, portable tents, things like that, that they're doing uh, outside this cave. As, temp Carrigan. as tempting as a long rest might be, uh, would it not be better if we got back to the Red Door to collect payment for the job and take our rest there? If that's what you would like, and I believe after such a fight, I imagine several of you qualified for your uh, certifications. Um, not many know this, but uh, this the smiling uh, mimic, or that was the name of the bar, right, guys? Yes. Correct. Yeah, the smiling mimic. Uh, if you take your tests in the bar itself, you get a free night stay and a free hot meal. Ooh. It would have been great if I had a test to take. I guess I'll have to pay for it. Um, from here to Agril, though, we're looking at a ride of... Ooh, uh, seven to nine days. Uh... How far is it to the nearest town with a inn connected to the Red Door? 
not quite far, but you do know that they don't enjoy people using the teleportations. Uh, though you could collect your reward there, hopefully, unless the knights... Oh, no, this came from head office, didn't it? The uh, quest that you got. You will have to eventually go in directly, and the knight captain makes a kind of, like, ugh, annoyed face. You'll need to speak with uh, accounts receivable. All right, then uh, why don't we spend uh, the day here resting, and we can head for uh, the larger city when we have the chance. You can have a proxy, of course, uh, do it for you, uh, speaking to the accounts, but you'll find that your reward generally ends up being a lot less. The head office likes seeing the adventures it pays in person uh, to get proper in-depth reports from them. It, I don't understand why I'm going to send one anyways to them. Hey, that's fine with me. I prefer to be the only one handling my money anyways. And eats. Well, you'll have to uh, pray to whatever gods you worship when dealing with accounts receivable. Bureaucracy and all. Their entire job is to hold on to all of our money two fists. Oh. So it'll be a pleasure then. Isn't it always dealing with money? And the Here. people that hold it so tightly. As you guys are setting up, he gestures for one of the uh, scribes to come over in his group and uh, begins penning you a letter of introduction. So then, a long rest for you all. Yes. We'll set up and keep you updated for the findings. Thank you. Um... Would it be possible for us to have our own tent slightly away from your group? No offense to you, but I'd like to speak with my uh, companions here privately. Absolutely. Again, we are at your beck and call. And uh, he uh, tells a few of the retainers to set up your tent a about uh, 90 feet away from theirs. Thank you, good sir. You're welcome. And uh, if you'd like, we can ha I can have a few of the... Uh, my men patrol around between the two areas, so none of you would need to take a watch if you'd like. Oh, that would be quite lovely. Very well, just call on us when you are finished your discussion. I wouldn't want any of my men to intrude. Again, thank you. And, uh, they begin setting up their tents, and soon your guys is set up, and uh, you're all in your tent, if you want to be. The captain and his retainers keep a respectful distance away from your your area. All right. Uh, I assume inside our tent is just basically a, a blank tent, and then we have our stuff. Yes, exactly. Cool. Uh, Kerrigan will walk over toward the middle of the tent, set his pouch and traveling kit down. Then he'll uh, sit down, crossing his legs, look up at the party, and say with a completely straight face and in a stern voice, Sit down. Oh, as, as he does so, I also want to point out, although the captain seems to take good care of his gear, and um, you know his cooking kit was immaculate, all of the saddlebags, the saddles, this tent, and all of the stuff that looks like it's issued by the knights instead of personal items are run down out of color very clearly super old and have been in this tent's case for instance patched so many damn times none of it looks like it's really really great gear when it's not a personal item that one of the knights was wearing or keeping like you remember that magic sword kerrigan that you've got for instance mm-hmm all of the knight's other weapons, aside from anything that they consider personal, likely, are uh, drab, clearly, you know, like, l poor quality and cheap looking. Uh, at that, I will actively be looking around when I'm walking near them to see if there's rust on any of their weapons. Okay. 
Uh, you haven't seen any actual rust yet, but it's, again, just, you know, poor quality metal, low quality things. It looks like they do pretty good at upkeeping what shitty gear that they're being given. Good. That's an important quality. Uh, so, yes, Kerrigan tells you all to sit down. It sounds like I need to change the music for this. Uh, should I sit in your lap? In a circle, if you don't mind. Is there a halfling chair? We're sitting on the ground. Cross your legs, sit down. Okay, I barely reach above the table. There's no table. I thought There's nothing you said in here was... except our stuff. Oh, okay. Well... I'll sit on my backpack to reach about the same height as everyone else. I I, I level. <laughs> I t I t pose for dominance. <laughs> I uh. scoop you up and yeet you out. <laughs> oh, well, I guess he didn't want me on this meeting anyway. Well, <laughs> guess I've got to go off and see if there's any cute knights to talk to. <laughs> anyway. Do you all sit? Uh, yeah. I, I tried until I was yeeted out of the tent. <laughs> Don't T-pose me, boy. I come back and I sit inside. I, I sit... And, uh, you know, uh, with my legs to the side and, uh, spread out my skirts. All right. I do have I pants underneath. I, I, I sit in Runa's lap. As she just kind of stares off into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, We're living no. the horrors of her past lives. <laughs> Now she's getting a horror in this life. I mean, if any of you were elves, you would likely remember actually being in the era of uh, shaping. Elves, elves, li and dwarves too. Uh, both are long lived enough that the um, it's not past lives when they get adventurers fugue. It's actual PTSD. Yikes. Yeah, they 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 were there. Anything that uh, would have lived, you know, about eight hundred years was there. Anyways. So. This was effectively our first mission as a party. We all worked adequately together and we all seem to have survived. However, it seems that this happened more through sheer dumb luck than skill or any of us actually working together. So, if this is going to continue, and we're going to continue risking our lives and trusting our lives in the people around us, I want to know who the fuck I'm working with. We know each other's names, but short of our names and what you look like, I don't know anything about you people. As far as I'm aware, none of you know anything about me. Back inside that cave, we all nearly died. Heath especially. I'm honestly surprised you're still alive. If not for the actions of Runa, you would likely be a sm completely a smear on that glass. So, well, we have the chance. We have the opportunity. We're being watched over by knights. We're here as safe as it's likely going to get for some time. I want to take a moment and learn who the fuck I'm traveling with. I'm not asking you to spill your life stories or to tell me anything that you think is super secret that you can't tell anyone. I'm not looking for the most detailed work you've ever done or anything that you might find personally damning. But I want to know the basics from all of you. Who are you? Where did you come from? Why are you here and doing this? Are you are you working for like a secret organization? <laughs> oh my god. You know something? You sound really paranoid right now, man. We're not out to hurt you. 
Is there something that's bothering you? We could talk about it. We are talking about it. I have no problem, no no qualm at all risking my life for friends and companions. However, I would like to know those companions. <sighs> Not gonna lie, Heath, I know so little about you. Had you died inside there, I might have shed a single tear and then forgotten you. <laughs> Wow. Good that's lord. Not anything I'm personal cold. against you. Cold. It couldn't be personal against you because I don't know you. You know, dude. I would have dragged you back to the adventurous guild if I could. Cuz that's just what a good man does. I didn't say it's not, that. And it's not, it's not about caring or anything. It's just I, I've got your back and you've got mine. That's how it was supposed to be. And now you hear you're saying that you wouldn't even shed a tear for me. I did say I would shed a tear for you. You might shed a tear for you. I, you should be dealing in more absolutes. But that's the problem, Heath. I, I want to get to that point where I would care about you. If we're going to work together, I, I want to know you. I, I want to know... Who you are, who it is that makes Keith Keith. Well, before he's Twinkle Bottom, I think there's someone we should turn to before anything else. Stares at Harja. The shiftiest, the shiftiest looking one. Who is that? You! What? What'd I do? You know, Heath, that's actually a very good point. Haja. Yeah, what's that? Who the hell are you? I'm Haja. More than just that. Who's Haja? A human. Where'd you come from? I don't know. Do you have family? I don't know. What are your goals here? I don't know. Do you know anything? Thing is, I can't really tell if this is Egg not knowing or if this is the character uh, not knowing. You know what? I feel like it fits him really well. <laughs> I, know some, I know some things. Like? Like what? Well, Are you working for the see. red? Oh, I'm sorry, Solstice. Go ahead. I can definitely say he knows how to run very fast. <laughs> if there's one thing I know, it's how to drift. <laughs> <laughs> I only know one thing, Lucille, and that's shoveling. And I shovel real good. Is so you're wondering you? if he works for the red, red door. door? Oh, I thought we all work for the red door now. Uh, Kerrigan will take his helmet off at this point, and his bright emerald eyes will stare directly into Haja's. And I stare back. Haja. Yeah. Focus for a second, friend. I, I am. You work for the Red Door, correct? We are all here as members of a party affiliated with the Red Door Union. Yeah, I think I got a contract. Like, I ho I think we... You, wait, don't you have my contract as well? I do. Yeah, then you know. Then why you ask me? Why do you work for the Red Door? Are you doing this because you wish to be an adventurer? Or are you doing this purely for cash? Oh, they asked me to. You went there to begin with, though, right? You didn't just show up all willy-nilly. There could possibly have been a recruiter outside that may have convinced them to sign up, and he, being who he oh, walked in and no. signed up. To be honest, I don't know what we get for the Red Door Union besides rewards for killing stuff. Is there anything else? A free resurrection? Do we need that? If you die, it could be useful. Uh, I mean, do you, do you want to die? Uh, not yet. <laughs> then, I do this. then wouldn't it be kind of normal that a free resurrection does sound kind of nice? 
I, I get the feeling we could sit here in this line of questioning with him all day and learn nothing. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like this questioning has told us so much about you, Aja. I mean, he could be a serial killer just waiting to kill us. Oh. Well, we know he's not a vampire. Maybe. What? what? Aja, did you just say that you might be waiting to murder us? Oh, no. Not waiting to kill you guys, no. Wait, are you killing us now? Why would I? Well, you said you weren't waiting. Uh, I feel so bad for you all right now because I've tried to interrogate Haja, as, like, role-playing as, you know, guards, police, officers, devils, demons. <laughs> you don't understand how many times I've had to interrogate Egg, okay? Like, I, I feel for you all so much right now. You're just trying to get a straight answer about anything. If we're gonna get we're gonna get nowhere with Haja, you next. Why are you in this group? <clears throat> well, what are you remember after? Remember the fir remember the first time you you met me. Yeah, when you were getting the shit beat out of you. Oh, right. Guy. So, um. I'm a twinkle bottom and my family has a bit of a reputation from the little village we come from and it's that we're we're kind of dodgy is the way some would put it some call us straight up thieves and liars but I wouldn't see it like that we just sort of We're pretty good at making people believe in the things we're selling, so to speak. And at a certain point, I didn't want any of that anymore. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I, I love the feeling of, you know, selling something for what it's not worth. But I feel I feel like I had so much more greatness in me. And so one day I told my parents I am going to join the Bard's College of what's this country called again? Uh Agril. Uh of Agril. Oh wait, no. We're, so, you wanted to do the. Oh no, you wanted to do this Bard College, not the big cool Bard College, right? Uh, what's the big cool Bard College? Pretty sure it's Valencia in there. Uh, so I wanted to join the the Bard College of Valencia. Um, and they wished me all the luck, gave me a kiss on the cheek, and then off I went. I never made it to Valencia. Um, because I couldn't make it past the preliminary, uh, tests. I, 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 I failed my, oh my god, what's it called? My, my, my entrance, um, Exam? exams. Uh, the reason why I failed them is large and many. Uh, long nights, drinking, partying. Um, you, you failed your entrance exam to become a bard because you were being a bard. Yeah, because I failed to show up for the entrance exam. That has got to be probably the funniest story I've heard you tell yet. <laughs> well... I couldn't go back home and tell my parents that I was a failure. 
So I traveled the whole continent as much as I could until the new entrance exams would come by and I would get a chance to. But then I started running out of money. So I've gone back to my fam family's craft, the one I know the best. And uh, I've made some pocket money here and there. But, um, let's just say there's a lot of people that don't appreciate what I give them. And what I give them is hope and happiness for a while. But sometimes people feel like that's not enough for what they're losing in the process. And so people beat me up all the time. That was a strange... Uh, back when I was getting beaten up that time either. And so it just happened that this whole adventuring thing kind of just worked out in my favor as well. I get some protection. I get to travel with a party of buddies. And I can make some money while I wait for another chance to take my exams. That is all. Before you speak, before you speak, Kerrigan, one moment. Heath, your your pocket has a warmth going from it. And you see Heath's fist just raising the air. Ah, fucking you, it. Uh, you, you look on your sheet, and uh, the achievement that's beginning to uh, process is for monologuing for ten minutes. <laughs> and, and I just I just stand straight up, just pump pump my fist into the air and then I just start, you know, uh, hip thrusting. Yeah! Oh, oh yeah, I'm the best! Oh, yeah! I knew it! Yeah! Booyah! I was gonna say something nice and then you started hip thrusting in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, it is, it is the most active part of my body. Except for my mouth. Mm. Oh my. Heath, thank you for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. And if you ever need the service of a twinkle bottom, you know where to find me. In the tent. Next to yours. <laughs> Fair enough. Solstice, would you care to share? Um, oh, oh sure. Uh, I, I, I joined the... Um, Temple of Havana. When I was a small child, before that, I don't particularly care to recall my history. Um, but in the temple, I found family in the home, and just I I, I flourished under the the warm, loving gaze of my goddess. Um, and I studied very, very hard. It's why I know so much about religion. Um, so, every ten years, um, we get clerics of the moon, of the of the sun goddess Ravana. Um, I, I'm not sure if you are aware that uh, of, of Ravana and her her pursuit of the moon goddess, her love. I am not aware of it. No. Well, she is courting the moon goddess. She's very much in love, but the moon goddess does not give her much regard. She has sent numerous messages of love and loyalty and passion through our god of sand, Brother Sun, Sand, but um, to no avail. So every 10 years, the clerics that are still able to, are still wanting to, set out on a journey to find a present for the moon goddess. So that the sun Arj Ravana can win her love. 
um, as I was too long the previous time that it occurred, I did not go, but this is my first venture out and I'm very eager to prove myself to my goddess so that I may be redeemed. And you see, I do not particularly care for my history or my bloodline. So it is with hope in my heart that this venture will allow for me to be redeemed and to become like our I gesture to Runa, uh, pretty much saying that I wish to become a, an Asmar. That is quite the interesting goal. I'm not so sure. So I, how... I joined the Adventurers Guild because I felt that traveling on my own would be, well, very dangerous. So I looked to join adventurers in, in hopes of finding the perfect gift for the Moon Goddess. It's not so sad! And so beautiful! It was quite Yes, nice. the story of the sun goddess and moon goddess is very beautiful. It also brings tears to my eyes, too. Well, in all fairness, if any of you have questions for me, I'll answer them as well. Hold on, you're not going to make us go talking about our past and you don't even want to mention it unless we ask you? Come on, my. I asked you, and that's what made you answer. Very well. Why are you adventuring here? What has brought you to this continent? Well, years ago, uh, well, you see, um, my father was but a humble merchant, uh, lowborn, um, started off with just a, a few copper to his name, and over a long career of uh, traveling and, well, just general mercantile fun, he was able to build up a large enough uh, trade uh, company that he could purchase for himself the lowest title of lord imaginable. After he had acquired his title, um, myself and my siblings were born. Uh, technically speaking, um, I should be introducing myself as Lord Kerrigan of the House Adams. Uh, but it's easier to get around if people think that you're just a, a you know, adventurer. So, um, I decided that, uh, I likely wasn't going to see much of an inheritance, and I wanted to follow in, uh, at least the basis of my father's footsteps, but I'm not nearly as good a merchant as he is, so I decided I would join up with, uh, the Red Door Union, and see if I could use some swordsman skills I've picked up over the years to try and earn myself enough coin that I could start my own business. Do you have any idea what sort of business you wish to start up? Well, I suppose that entirely depends on where our adventures take us. If I can accrue a, a good amount of magical items or little trinkets, then perhaps I'll open a shop like that, selling to adventurers. Otherwise, food's always needed, and caravans always need a master. I have a question. Ask away. Do you like your family? 
well enough. Dang it. I was hoping you would have some sort of blood feud with them. Then we could go and rob them blind. If you're not going to get the inheritance, I mean. But if you do, if you like them, then we can't. I mean, then it's just, and it's just, you know, it's not kosher. My family is kind enough. My father was uh, good enough to me to provide me with my starting equipment. And he gave me fare to come here to this kingdom and set me on my way. Well, I guess we'll have to find some other privileged family to uh, uh, get some well-earned money from in the future, then. That's not I related to any of us. I definitely not recommend my family. Definitely not mine. Nope. She oh, goes what pale. If, what if Haja has a really rich... I doubt it. Family, he's what? not telling us. What's my clothes again? Aren't I wearing potato sacks for shoes? Yeah, I am. You think I'm rich? I'm wearing potato sacks for shoes. Well, I mean, I've I've heard about people that that's been living like homeless people, even though they're they're really rich. Yes, there is such a thing as eccentrics, and that is exactly what you are. Even if you aren't filthy rich. Well, he's mostly just filthy, really. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought I'm cleaner than you. Uh, no, he did go swimming, didn't he? Yeah, I guess took a swim. Oh. Does anyone have any questions for anyone else? Quite honestly, I'm afraid to ask Ash any questions. Do you... It's probably a wise decision, yeah. Do you have a sister, Carrigan? Me? Yes, I yeah. have a sister and a brother. Hmm. You think he's looking to marry? Are you implying you would like to marry my sister? I would just just ask you just in case, you know, if I want to ret if I if I, if I if I want to retire one day, it would be nice to marry someone rich. Both are already married. Hmm. They don't have any Adult children, right? How old are you? I don't think I like this particular line of questioning. No, I mean, like you're saying, is he like, is is Carrigan like fifty, or is he like thirty, or whatever? Like, oh no, he's he's uh he's probably in his early to mid twenties. Right, so they probably don't have any adult children either. No, they don't. I'm not looking to marry into your family then. But you would vouch for me, right? Sure. Yeah, because we're friends now. <laughs> Anyways, um, so... If there are no other questions, uh... Now we all know each other. I know who you are, you know who I am. At this point. Um, I know uh, on our sheets it it says uh, technically I, I am the leader of the party, but I feel I've made it clear beforehand and I'll say it again now. Uh, I don't intend on directing every part of your lives. As far as I'm concerned, that may as well be an empty title. However, I would like to make a proposal here. In combat, we seem to be scattered. Everyone's doing their own thing off in the distances and trying trying to work together, but we, we're a group, we're not a team. So, when we're not in combat, do as you will. I'm not your boss, I'm not your ruler, I'm not your lord. However, if you would all agree, when we do see combat, that is when I would like to take charge. I have a slight issue. 
And I just want to point something out real quick. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I'm not here to be the, as I said, the lawyer. I would like to point out that the reason why we've been scattered you're mumbling. I in combat you. is because for a lot of time, the reason why we've been scattered in any time there's been a battle is because at one time, Haja ran off on his own. Another time, you ran off on your own caravan, while yes, the rest of us were together. And then another time, we had two people that was on the opposite side of the cavern, while you and me were staying behind. So, if you want to direct everyone in a battle, you would have to start directing us tactically before a battle. And tell us where everyone needs to go to these locations. Instead of leaving it up to our own devices. Because otherwise, we're going to end up scattered again. And you can't really give orders well. If that's what you want to put it as. Unless we're together in the first place. Yes, Heath. I agree. That's why I wanted to uh, present this as such. Um... I, I don't want to have the conversation of, hey guys, I'm not trying to lead your lives or anything, but I have an idea every time we're about to start a fight. So, I'd like to put it forward now. If we feel that we're about to engage in combat, I would like to be able to tell people, here's a plan, and I'd like to know that you're going to be receptive to it. Well, trust me, I'll, I'll follow your lead with anything, really. Um, I don't know about Harsha. As it is, I think that our previous uh, combats have taught us a very important lesson. Kerrigan turns sharply toward Harsha. Yes? We need to not split the party. Did I split the party last time? Yes trying to remember well remember that time when you snuck up uh, together with solstice and you were completely isolated from the rest of us for the entire well, combat the old sole purpose of me following him was because he decided to go scout the head right yeah remember that time you decided to go try to clean yourself off and the best possible option you had was clearly to walk through the town of plant monsters alone Ah, uh, that one time. Okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, Carrigan, as this is my first for foray into the world of adventuring, I will certainly listen to some advice. It seems that yours is just so. Alright. That being said, we're not a military. My orders aren't law. If any of you have an idea, uh, have any ideas, please feel free to present them. If ever we're about to engage in some kind of a combat, and any of you think of something or notice something, by all means, tell the group. We are here as a team. We need to work as one. And should everyone agree to this, and we do actually start acting like a team. Uh, I can promise you to, I, I'll help with anything you guys require as best as possible. Heath, if you find yourself on the business end of a couple other guys' fists once more, I can't promise I'll save you from the beating, but I can promise I'll at least join you in it. Wow, that's uh, very generous of you. You just joined... <laughs> You join be the people beating him up. <laughs> technically, yeah, that's technically, yeah, absolutely. technically, this fulfills the promise I made I to you before. This, Heath. Is... this is still joining, Heath. <laughs> you deserve it. It's you that... really earned this one. It's it's that it's that one scene from uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures with sipping the wine, and then suddenly uh, he comes in, joining in on the. It's this. Beating. Well. 
I, I'm, I'm a bit worried that was less of a promise and more of a threat now. <laughs> it's a promise. If we're a team, we're a team. I'll help you guys. You help me. We all help each other. Okay. Good. I wanted to make sure that we had that no, understanding no. before we continued on. And if should you encounter the other end of a feast, I will certainly help mend your wounds. Ah, oh, that also brings up another point I wanted to stress. Oh dear. Uh, Aja. Yes? You need to stop hurting yourself. Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! I, I never thought I would actively have to have this kind of a conversation with someone. But you need to stop hurting yourself and stop uh, putting yourself uh, in harm's way. What did I do that hurt myself? I'm kind of curious. I don't remember. You stabbed yourself with a magical knife to see what it does. I wasn't hurting myself. I was being scientific. I was making discoveries. You could have done that to literally any animal we passed along the way. You were well, suspicious we no of that goat back there. You could have run back and stabbed it. At the time, I did not have that special knife when I had that, that goat. That's Sasuke. Well, I also... Well, I think the point that he's trying to make, Kaja, is that scientific uh, experimentation experimentation that leaves you hurt makes it more difficult for us to take care of you. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, yeah. Better if you, it's better if you hurt someone that is a threat to us rather than yourself. You don't oh, need yes. to try you don't need to try out the the knife before a combat. I see, I see. I do I you do it during rest or breaks and I guess. Please stop hurting yourself. Hurt other things. Hurt other people. You know, Hurt enemies. Maybe maybe we maybe maybe we're looking at And it, this is the wrong way. Do you? Do you need to talk? And is, uh, is there something troubling you? What shall we talk about? Well, why do you want to hurt yourself? I don't. But I don't think you guys would be happy if I tested Blade on you guys. So this is the best you, option I can think of. You didn't need to test it. I wanted to see what it does. It felt magical. But you didn't need to test it on yourself. Yeah, but what else am I going to test it on, under short notice? But maybe don't. Okay, okay, okay. I'll just, we're worried about you. Haja, I, what I, happens if one day you acquire for yourself a weapon with some kind of uh, horrible curse? Some, some kind of terrible blade that if you stab someone with it, it just kills them. And you decide to test it on yourself, and then you're dead. Ah, well that happens, I usually just wake up. Um. Um. Well, I guess technically you would just wake up because we have a free resurrection, but. That's beside the point. The point is, um, the, the main point here is, uh, Solstice is a, a wonderful addition to our party. Her heals are amazing, and they're probably the only thing that's kept us alive. However, every time you hurt yourself, and she has to expend that power on you. The next time we need it, she might not have it. Look at us now. We're, we're all battered and broken. Heath's nearly dead still. And none of us have the ability to heal anyone. That's not necessarily from you. But if we didn't have to worry about you hurting yourself, it might be easier on us to keep going, to, to be able to stay you know, tip top and ship shape. Okay. Alongside, none of us like watching as you nearly tear off one of your own fingers. It's okay. I mean, speak for yourself. Apparently, there's a god that enjoys watching you nearly sever one of your own fingers, but 
He's not somebody who matters inside this party. Ouch. Out of character, Tamora doesn't exist in this world, right, Peg? Who? Tamora, the goddess of luck? No, yeah. there's a different goddess of luck. I told you her name last time. Okay, never mind. I don't remember her name. Oh, well. Okay, okay. I'll try not to hurt myself. Unless I need to, okay? Yeah, yeah. What I just posted in the group chat if, is how Haja does science and tests magic weapons. If you're about to hurt yourself, can you at least tell us first so we can stop you? Okay. Nah, I, okay, okay, sure. Haja just nods along and says yes, yes. I, I don't think he's going to tell us. Well, how about this? If you start hurting yourself without telling us, we'll stop healing you. <laughs> okay. You know what? I think that's fair, Heath. I, in the night, I just say quietly, I was already doing that. While well, we're on the subject of heals as well, uh, Heath, um, do you know healing magic? He was well, definitely I'm... casting healing word quite often. Yeah, I, I yeah. remember this as well. So, yes. so in the last combat, I was trying to get the uh, ogre to, uh, you know, not hurt us for a while, and so I spent a lot of energy trying to do that. Um, so that's why I couldn't get that much, you know, healing out. Which is a shame yeah, that it fine, failed. That's fine. It, if you are able to stop us from taking damage it, or from getting hurt, it, it's better than healing us after we're hurt. Right. That's that's that that was the logic I was going by. But then it kept on failing, and then I really wish I had those spells for you know, uh, actually healing. But sometimes you win some, you lose some. That's understandable. I was in the same boat there as well. Uh, I mm. will tell you all, I'll, I'll make the promise now. I'll never try that mist trick again. I thought it would be clever, but it didn't work the way I wanted it to, and I apologize for that. I'm sure there may have there may be uses for it, but uh, at that moment when you did it was not very good. <laughs> but I... I... <laughs> I thought it would have been great against the goblins. I did not anticipate... <laughs> Well, it was quite good than that because they were less likely to hit us, but we were mm. also less likely to see them. Yes. You being able to see perfectly in the fog was great. The party not being able to see in the fog. You essentially, you know what I loved about that uh, thematically? You turned it up into one of those cartoon dust ups. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Anyways. for healing and that's for spells I, 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 I know that you, you cast a healing word on me yes and I, thank uh, you very I much have learned uh, some healing as well but I don't think it's quite as potent as yours um, probably not but it's but it, it is I would not it is uh, any healing is, is good healing mm. agreed yes. Um, Mine, mine's not uh, quite as potent as yours, and it doesn't have the range of Heath's, but um, I think between the three of us, we should be able to not die. This is true. And do you, perchance, have any other um, magics? Mm, not yet, but I feel like when we return to the, the red door and uh, use our sheaths, uh, I might be able to learn something new. Okay. I think well, it is good for us to be aware of what we can bring to the party in order to um, work together more cohesively. Agreed. Uh, Heath. Oi. I, I see you carry a blade on you, but it seems like most of the time when we're fighting, you, you seem to be doing some kind of... Um, I'm guessing it's magic through your insults? I mean, I, well, I saw I, you insult something and the glass cracked. It's 
Um, it's more about position, really. I've stabbed with my rapier a few times, too. Um, I also remember when we were fighting the dryad, I was literally just beating it with a chain. So, like, it's just sometimes my little feet won't let me get into range, and so I would have to use something from a distance instead. All right. Um, if you had the option mid combat, do you usually prefer to be up close and personal or stay at a range? Ah. Uh... I mean, I, 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 I'll be wherever I need to be. Um, the power of being a, you know, a versatile p member of the party as I am is that I can go wherever I need to. The, uh, I'm, I'm more of a lover than a fighter. So. All right. I like if if I get up close, I'll probably uh, get the shit kicked out of me. Very well. Um, I believe it's quite obvious where I prefer to be in combat. Yes, your big sword definitely tells us exactly where you prefer to be. Keith, I'm proud of you. You didn't even make a joke of that. Um. Don't, don't, don't ruin it. I was thinking of one, but you, um, told me no, not to you, so now I don't want to. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for bearing with me and having this meeting. I feel like it was simple, but it was necessary. At least now, next time when we get into a fight and we're trying to save each other's lives, we know who we're fighting for. And with. This is true. What was that? Nothing. Well, uh, unless uh, anyone else has anything to say, um, that that's all I wanted to discuss. Uh, I'm probably going to curl up and take a nap while we have the chance. Yeah, that sounds good. Yes, I think rest is something that we all deserve. After the audio we just went through. All right. Say it's pretty well earned, so let's all take a good nap. We'll we'll take a good long uh, long rest here, and we'll see about uh, getting the knights to bring us back toward a city later on. You guys spend some time setting up the inside of the tent to your, you know, specifications. Heath, you swaddle yourself up. I'm guessing. Yep. Uh, by the way, when I, when he swaddles himself up, he'll lay down his like a uh, blanket down on the ground, and then he spins himself into it. Uh, so he makes himself into a cocoon, so that if he would have to get up in the mor uh, in the like night uh, or in the morning or whatever, really quick, he would just you know roll himself really quickly to get out of it. But it, it it would still take a little bit of time. Um, if anything, maybe he he'll start hanging himself from the uh, roof of things, and then uh, well, maybe mm, that's not what I meant to say. He'll <laughs> hang a he'll hang part of it of his swaddle to the roof, and then if he has to get out of it real quick, he'll jump off of a hammock or something, and he'll unwind on the way down. Keith's. Uh... Uh, nightly routine involves hanging himself. <laughs> Don't say that! <laughs> no. it's, it's, oh my god, isn't this week suicide aware this week? I don't know, I'd yeah. say with that joke, I'm pretty aware. <laughs> oh god. Anyway. 
so yeah, I, I swaddled myself up and, um, yep. All right. Oh, sorry, That's not a bad. I'm sorry. I have been sick today, so I, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Uh, bu -bu 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 huh? Huh? I messaged like mean? early in the morning telling you that I was like, you know, throwing up. That wasn't Martin, that was me. No, I thought the yawning part. I thought that was Martin's character. I was like, oh, is he yawning? Oh. Oh. Uh, um, you let the knights know that you're going to bed. You guys get a long rest. Uh, Kerrigan and Solstice. Hmm. Your dreams are plagued. By a horrible landscape entirely encased in glass. Every single flower, every tree, every animal is in perfect stillness. Unable to move, frozen in time. Nothing moves here, nothing speaks. The general sense of air moving stale and lifeless underneath the glass at your feet you can see that rivers of molten magma or lava I don't know what it is I'm not a fucking scientist but it's moving around Ma magma underground lava above ground I don't know it's not ground it's glass what do you call it that I it either works in this case magma we'll call it magma flows freely deep far down beneath these endless layers of glass and individually in your dreams you go to take a step forwards and realize you can't move you look down and your legs are encased in the same glass as everything else your hands your body everything i want to know how the two of you handle this both of you ladies first i cast some sort of fire spell and use the heat to attempt to shatter the glass you try to wave your hands but without being able to move anything there's no semantics and somatic components that you're able to weave you're just trapped here in this glass nothingness kerrigan hmm. I have no mouth and I must scream. You try to open your mouth to scream and as you do a strange whine still manages to escape your body but it's like you're pushing air through every pore in your flesh that's causing it rather than it coming from any one mouth or orifice on your body. The both of you while you're getting used to this strange occurrence note that below you parts of the glass are more opaque causing a reflective surface and on the other side you see a human and a halfling sleeping and comfortable there's a sudden cracking and shattering sound and both of you wake up one of the knights is uh you can see a shadow outside your tent flap and a, a polite voice calls in um Excuse me, uh, Team Nat 1. Yes. The captain has need of you. We have reports back from the area you conducted your battle in. The valley with the lake? Very well. Uh, we'll be there in a few moments. Very good. He says it's no urgency. The uh, shadow disappears from your tent flap. Uh, I guess Solstice is already awake as well? Yes, I woke up at the same time you did. Hmm. Bad dreams? Yes, how did you know? Mm. Me too. Mm. Yeah. It's very strange. I dreamt I was encased in glass. 
no, huh. no, don't, don't. I have the same me, brain. That is certainly no. natural. Not here. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, the cat I... wants to talk to us, and I don't want to listen to Heath. So, should we wake them up? Uh... Oh, you naughty, naughty girl. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, think you, know you may I... be slightly upset if we woke him up at this point. Yeah, you, you know, I, I, I think he's probably having a really good dream. Yes. All right. Pierzaja is awake, though. <gasps> Wait, what is that? Why are you... Uh, oh. No! <laughs> no, don't put it! Don't put it in my... No! <sighs> I had a horrible dream. We... I don't think... We don't want to know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Some of your dreams, some of your dreams, you were encased in glass, and in someone else's glass was encased in them. Right. Uh, so. Oh, um, oh, patch you, dirty boy. Yeah, I thought that so, was quite clever, and I'm frustrated. Only yeah, egg lab. No, it, was, it was. It was. It was clever. I was surprised that you actually said something clever for once. I was shocked. Oh, Silence. Anyway, I, I, I. Yep. The captain wants to see us. Grab your shit and let's go. Uh, okay. I start, uh, worming my way over to my stuff. Um. I grab the side of your blanket and start unrolling you. Wee. Right. Okay. Let's go. You know, I feel like we could make a toy like this. <laughs> <laughs> we would call it. <laughs> uh, I was trying to say Haja, but like a yo yo. Alright. You guys head out to meet with the captain. He's there with a couple other knights and a few from the party that you had met before, including the one that you'd called up in particular, the robed woman who appears very fucking tired. It looks like she hasn't gotten any sleep in this time since you saw her last. And, uh, she's standing around kind of frustratedly, clearly. The captain waves you all over and says, Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. Well, I suppose morning. more good afternoon. Ah, uh, the sleep schedule of an adventurer. Puts his hands on his hips. I have ill tidings to report. Oh, no. oh and, uh, good tidings, thankfully. Um, the missing unit was found. All hands accounted for. No, good. Good. The ill news I have comes from our... Archerson, why don't you take it over from here? The woman looks annoyed with the captain, steps up in front of you all, and just says very bluntly, We found shit. You found shit? There's nothing there. Aja, what did you do? Wait, what? The place? You said that the uh, glass ley lines? The mirror? Yes. There's nothing there. We found a mirror. It was a normal mirror. Could it have been solely activated because of the... Um, the night? The, the, the particular day? That's a theory. Perhaps. Could could it be it went long enough without somebody being fed to it? Maybe as well, but then that, that we'd still have found traces or something at least. You don't get a ma place that magic and really charged without leaving some evidence behind. An item causing it, a uh, charge in the air, something like it. It's all just gone. Nothing. We can't even find a single shard of glass. That makes sense, though. Wind could have picked that up and blown it away. Inside the cavern? There was it's a valley. Everywhere. It's a valley down there. Not a cavern. That's troubling. Well, to be fair, 
anything that is a is a cavern to me. Because there's always, you know, everything is always above me. The only evidence we have that anything even happened there is the account of the villagers and your own accounts. All word of mouth. Oh, and one one of them just keeps muttering something about an ass potion. Yeah. I don't want to know. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. But... Whatever happened there, it's clear that it's... Whatever trace of it was designed to... Just... She kind of gestures with her hand. Meaning that this whole endeavor has been an utter waste of my time. Captain, I would recommend turning this over to any squadron with divination wizards in their, their group. Perhaps they would be able to discern more from that, but I highly doubt it. I did every damn test I could think of and everything I could in order to try to get that mirror working again. Thankfully, there was some dried, bloody mud all over it. So I was able to try to get it to interact with blood. Nothing happened. Now the damn thing nearly broke when we chiseled the dried mud off of it. Did you see your reflection in it? Yep, normal mirror, like I said. Look, if you don't believe me, and I can understand that, you can come back and do whatever kind of adventure or bullshit you want to do on it. I, I, feel sure like Jesus I feel like that may be a waste of both your and our time. I do believe you. We even, um, one of the villagers mentioned seeing him go into the lake, coming out with no clothes on. Yes. And we started dragging the lake, haven't found anything yet in all the areas that would make sense, unless all of his shit somehow got carried on further downstream, which is unlikely, that's not really a strong current going through there. Then his clothing just vanished and whatever, too. Hmm. If you're curious about the area, too, this is uh, marked on our maps, and we have been through and investigated these ruins before. They're the ruins of the Bell. <laughs> it was a uh, watchtower in the era of Shaping's time. Well, watchtower, prison, keep, whatever you wanted to call it. <laughs> Known for a big-ass bell that sat on top. Bell's been gone for... Oh, since the war ended. Probably got carried off by scavengers, but it was rumored to have magical properties. What sort of magical properties? Ringing it would chase off evil creatures. Force them out of the area. I can Do we have any idea? Want to steal it. <clears throat> yes. Can you? Would you? Would you? Why do you think these uh, cultists um, chose this location to perform their ritual? No fucking clue. Maybe because of the watchtower. Honestly, I don't even think that they're cultists. With how this was all set up and everything, a bunch of uh, showy lights that went nowhere. It's probably just people uh, playing it up, you know, claiming they found the meaning of the era of glass, things like that. Showboating mostly, copycats, pretenders. I doubt it was anything I... actually serious. The villagers if only you... report seeing the glass moving around, and some psychopath killing, as well as a few okay. creatures that could be explained away by being modified flesh golems. The fight with glass? Yeah. Reinforcement in order to remove the weakness to fire flesh golems have, likely. Ironically, okay. gave them the weakness to bludgeoning, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. But we've had no reports of anything strange. Only uh, what you said about the mirror not showing some reflections. But the berserkers that we um, fought were creatures of flesh and blood. They were not golems. 
They leave Except a body behind? where they were injured. No, they shattered into pieces when they perished. Do you got any evidence or anything else you want to tell me? Anything that I can use to try to investigate a different matter? Because if not, then it, it just looks like pretenders. Aja, do you still have your glass knife? Yes. Of course I have my glass knife. Knife? Yes. A knife of glass. Don't we also have a bag full of the glass? From Honey Falls? Oh, right. I, I collected some. Alright, those will be helpful. Is there anything else that you're not telling me that I need to know? Anything that happened? Have you uh, have you been to that town to see the glass uh, tree? Well, I haven't oh, personally, yeah. but we've gotten reports that again, there's just nothing. It's dust. Interesting. Honey Falls burned to the ground. A fire left oh. unattended in the uh, temple. Huh. It's the dry season summer, so the fire caught and spread quickly. The captain notices some worried expressions likely among you and says, It's nothing to worry about. Um, Little Rock will see to their rehousing. Um, my, my, my apologies, but I also wish... Uh, have you questioned the villagers of Honey Falls? Because within a, a mile radius of that village, all the trees were cut down. Was oh. it their doing, or was it some other? Uh, the yeah, the villagers shed light on that. Um, when their attackers came the first time, uh, they had a dryad apparently that was fond of the town, and it was teleporting around the trees to protect the village and prevent the attackers from getting any closer. The attackers lit fires and cut down trees in order to limit her movements, and eventually smoked her out. Thus, driving her insane. Uh, aye. Apparently, according to the villagers, she then turned on them and used her vines and the new glass power she had gained to restrain the majority of them, which is how they were captured in the first place. But again, there's no actual evidence or proof of any of this. All I have are eyewitness accounts, which can be joggy at best. The villagers are seem confused, and a lot of stories are conflicting. Some say that the Dryad was attacking with the attackers from the get-go and that they were the ones who cut down their own trees. Others say that the fires were started by residents of Honey Falls. Some say it was by the attackers. Where it's going to take some time to get to the center of this matter. Can I have that knife now, please? And she holds her hand out to Haja. Oh, dear. You want the knife for what again? Are you intent? It is a very useful knife for him. I expect he would like it back after you are done inspecting it. The captain raises a hand and says, "Stand down, Archerson. Uh, Sir Haja or Mister Haja, Master Haja, which do you prefer? Rogue Haja. Haja. Haja, it is. The." If you were to surrender the knife into our custody, we would insert the knights would ensure it would never harm anyone ever again. But we would not be able to return it. We would likely send it to um, one of our research teams, which would examine it, discern all of its properties, and if they found it dangerous, they would likely seal it away, or it would be kept as further evidence to support your claims of what happened here. I, of course, believe you, as I am seeing it with my own two eyes, but. Archerson makes a good point. Without evidence and such, it's hard to prove whatever happened here actually happened. You understand? Hmm. See, I see. And... Heath, do you surrender the glass bag as evidence? Well, yes. She takes it from you and says thank you. The... You are more than welcome to keep the knife, Haja. You do not need to give it up right now. It's your choice. I'm thinking about it, because that knife is good for stabbing. <laughs> I find most are, Charity says. No, 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 no. You don't understand. This knife is very good at stabbing. Like, very good. Like, it goes in and out as if, like, you're stabbing 
Hey, Apple. No, Apple has more resistance, actually. Have you discovered all of its water. properties? The uh, woman says. Yeah, it's, it stands mm -hmm. really well. You know, not all properties have been discovered as of yet. You sure? I stab myself with it to know of its effect. Uh, trust me, I'm sure there's more to it. Ah. Weapons and other magic items can have undetected side effects that only occur under very specific circumstances. Or it could be cursing you uh, ever deeper even as we speak. If you'd like, I can cast Identify on it, but I'll be charging for my services. The Ooh, captain looks charging? at her. The captain looks at her and says, "And the knights will be happy to foot that bill, Mage Archerson." How much It'll are you charging paid. for the identify? The captain says he's paying for it, so for you, he's nothing. Paying, so go for it. Okay, sure. I'll let you identify it. She uh, takes it. And, uh, stretches her hands out. It floats in between her hands. You see magical energy kind of passing through. And over the next ten minutes, she's going to cast Identify. If anyone wants to do anything in the meantime. I stare at her for ten minutes. <laughs> I go to any sort of nearby clean water source and kind of do a quick washing up. Like, I'll take cleaning it. my I'll face. Take shit. I'll take a shit in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when she finishes casting it, she hands it back to you and she says, Now, my spell won't detect any curses. Sadly, there's no way to find that out apart from through trial and error. So, uh, yeah. But it appears as if the knife uh, definitely has some significant magical properties um, in it. As well as it looks like there's a way to get the knife to explode. I don't know if it'll reform afterwards, but it looks like from the way that there's certain... Uh, magical pathways through it. The knife can and is capable of blowing up. Uh, the other properties she tell you are the ones that you already knew. I see. Haja very much likes the sound of this. If it explodes, Gosh. I don't know what it'll do. But I just know that it's capable of coming apart. Meaning, since I can't figure out how to do it, it's likely a curse that causes it. I see. Hey guys. Uh, that's interesting. When we were um, combating in, uh, the um, the berserkers and the ogre, uh, whenever the berserkers did land a blow on blow on us, um, there was a sort of residual poisoning effect, as if there were glass, glass shards within our bloodstream. And it was sort of a, commu a cumulative effect as well. Interesting. Uh, she gestures uh, over uh, at one of the um, other retainers and says, uh, Chirujin, would you mind coming here? The Chirujin comes up and uh, she, uh, she says, um, would you mind being bloodlet a little bit? I have a theory. Uh, very well. Oh, not you. No, 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 no. The, the rogue who's been using the knife. Ah. Uh, sure. Oh, I stab myself again? No. That won't be necessary, the Cherugian says. And being a trained medical professional, he makes a medicine check to re just extract a harmless amount of blood from you. And having done so, he examines it and uh, a little bit later returns it uh, to uh, Archerson and says, no abnormalities in it, uh, mage. Whatever it's doing, it hasn't put glass in his blood yet, but who knows? Perhaps it has something to do with it blowing up. Either way, I'd be careful about it. Yeah, see. Powerful items hey. such as this, if they have a back way of backfiring, tend to do so in a spectacular manner. Honestly, it's a, probably a miracle that hasn't already happened. I am what you call lucky. Or foolish, which is also lucky. Do you have anything else that you'd like me to check on your persons? If the captain's foot in the bill, then I don't mind getting in a little extra bonus right now. Uh, I do have a stone that I procured. Um, I think I was able to determine some of its um, abilities, but it seems there may be other things that are hidden. Let me see. Certainly, and I procure 
my lucky cat stone, which I have called Kismet. You take out Kismet, and uh, the mage doesn't even need to cast the spell. She just takes a glance at it and says, uh, yep, that's a, uh, a luck stone. You'll be a little bit more yes. lucky while using it. And mechanically, this means exactly what you found out. Uh, if Kerrigan uses up, or if anyone uh, in the party that's within 30 feet of you uses all three luck points, the stone will charge with a single luck point that can be used by whoever's holding it. I see. In this case, Kerrigan, who has the lucky feet, is currently the only one who can charge it. But uh, if Kerrigan uses all three luck points within 30 feet of you, uh, the stone gets right. charged. Lucky doesn't work <laughs> since it's uh, it's luck points. I see. Because you could technically charge that like ev really quickly. Well, maybe I'll have it do that. I don't know. I didn't actually consider the halfling lucky uh, trait when I, I made this. Could I? Bardic inspire it? <laughs> like, tell the cat. <laughs> no. No, the cat. The cat's not <laughs> a really a living... Jump. The cat, the cat, uh, as you're told, uh, contains the spirit yeah. of a beneficial fey, essentially, within the stone. <laughs> That's how it's able to do so. It just very, very slightly warps probability around you. Uh, in addition, I should let you know, um, don't gamble with one of these on your person. I'm sorry? Gamble? <laughs> It's probably a criminal offense, right? It's like dosing, no, but for gambling. No, oh. it actually isn't. See, Fey are fickle bastards, and uh, if you try to count on the stone's luck and focus on doing it and being luck, the stone will reverse its properties and become an unluck stone. I see. Essentially, it's an item that you just want to... Permanently? It's an item that you just want to enjoy the benefits of and not ever need to rely on. If you have it in a make-or-break situation, the Fae will just swap to being a dick. Uh -huh. You know how it is. Everyone's lucky until they need it. I've learned that quite enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Serene, uh, you've now learned the other property. Um, if you ever use its lucky roll or focus on, like, the stone being a major part of your strategy, it will suddenly swap to an unlucked stone, and you will become cursed with it in, on your person. I see. <laughs> yeah, we get piles of them shipped to the, uh, the headquarters every fucking month of people who want them destroyed. All right, the rest of you, anyone else? Oh. Mm. Haja asked the group, Hey guys, should I give them the knife or no? Um, it's I mean... It's entirely up to you, Haja. It's your knife. For all we know, we could explode in your hand for trying to, you know... Use it? Use it at the right, wrong time, so... You know, maybe we could come across something that is not as volatile, but, you know... I'll leave it up to you. I see. Will I get compensation for this? I ask the peoples. I Very could nice. arrange... I could arrange a, um... A, a lesser powerful magical knife. Uh, find its way into your possession if you would like, the captain says. <laughs> it would simply be a plus one, but we, uh, uh, I, I believe I can pen something to convince accounts receivable as part of your reward to give it up. Okay. Very good. Nod, yes. Uh, he takes the knife and hands you a second sealed letter. This one is uh, for you. You need to turn it in at the Knights of the Agril Torn headquarters in order to be able to uh, essentially get the uh, the knife. It's a note of promissory. Okay. So what's your next move then, adventurers? I think 
that we are intending to return back into town uh, in order to take our um, adventure um, level ups, right? Exams get, or something, yep. whatever they're called. Get our rewards, resupply, take our exams, and find a new quest. Uh, will you be heading straight to aggro then? Unless something else pops up along the way. I don't see any reason not to. Very well. Um, we will take you as far as the uh, crossroads, and uh, you should be able to see your way the rest of the way. Does that work for all of you? Certainly. Uh, Kerrigan uh, unbelts the magical sword. And uh, I guess I'll hand it over. <clears throat> Thank we'll you very much. Sword. Thank you very Thanks. much, Master Kerrigan. Did Vanya return? Did Vanya give uh, his sword into your keep, safekeeping, uh, Sir Charity? Cher Cher what is it, Charity? What is Charity. his name, sir? Charity, okay. Uh, sir Charity. Yes, she's going to need a few months, likely, of bed rest, and I believe that her career as a knight will have ended when she comes out of it. Okay. Rip. I just meant, uh, did she give Kerrigan's sword to you so that he could be, be properly equipped? It was just a simple blade. It has no sentimental value to me. Um, Very well. If, as long as nothing happens from here to town, I could purchase myself a, another blade. I was thinking of getting one silvered anyways. Yes, I'm sorry. It must have uh, slipped her mind. Uh, here, and he reaches into his own coin pouch and he pulls out enough for you to buy a silvered blade. Oh, well, thank you, sir. As I said, I should be thanking you, and uh, it might come out of my personal wages in order to give you any kind of reward, but I fear that you'll have a less wholesome experience with uh, accounts receivable than you will with the Knights of Little Rock. Your charity is noted. <laughs> it's what I'm known for. He laughs. All right. We're going to mount up. Archerson, stay here at the uh, outpost up until the point that I return. And then we'll figure out what uh, else we can do to see if we can't find anything on the area. Head back to the uh, the outpost. The knights uh, mount up. The ones staying behind to loan you their horses stay behind. And you guys all get a stride. And I think I'm going to take a short break here. How about you guys? Cool for a short break? It sounds yeah, good. Yeah, sounds good. Gives me an opportunity to eat my dinner real quick. Yep, cool. Uh, how long do we want to take? It's uh, almost uh, 8 o'clock now, meaning that we've got... Well, we started a half hour late. Do we want to use that half hour of time and go late tonight? Or are we going to end on the same hour marker we normally do? I think I'm going to leave that up to um, Kerrigan and, and Martin, since they both have work or have... Uh, Kerrigan and Martin. different hours. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure.